Simon says subscribe and click on the bell icon to receive notifications. And welcome everyone. My name is Dave Casuto and I will be your instructor for this Introduction to Copilot Pro class. This is going to be a standalone class where we're going to walk you through all the amazing tools that Copilot Pro has to offer in terms of using Copilot Pro within Microsoft Word, within Excel, within PowerPoint, within Outlook to allow you to use all of the amazing artificial intelligence tools to be able to create documents, summarize documents, even looking at your spreadsheets to find out different reports, to create pivot tables, using it in PowerPoint to generate slides, to summarize slides, and even in Outlook to help you write emails and summarize emails, and so much more. And thanks everybody for joining us, and we'll see you in the first lesson. Welcome back, everybody. We're going to begin our lesson talking about Microsoft Word and Copilot. Now, the first thing you're going to notice is over here in the upper right, I have a Copilot icon. And you'll also notice very subtly, I have this little Copilot icon right there in the middle of my document. Now, my goal here is to create an article from scratch that does not exist. So what I'm going to do is simply click on this little icon right there. And then a box is going to pop up asking me to describe what I'd like to create. Now, what I'm going to have it do is create a 350 word article on how to start a career as a landscape architect. So very simply, I type that in, click on generate, and now it starts to feed in the new information. As I scroll down, you can see there it is, really nice. And then on the bottom, it asks me, hey, well, would you like to keep this potentially, or would you like it to regenerate? Or you know what, maybe I'd like to start it all over again. Now I could also go a little bit deeper and I can say, hey, you know what, can we please make this maybe a little bit more formal, a little bit more fun, maybe even a little bit longer. I'll just say, make it more fun and detailed. And then I'll go ahead and click on my arrow here and it's going to redefine my draft. Now, some of you may notice in the lower left, I can see how many words I have. 583 words were initially asked for 350, and you can see it is more detailed. Now, what's also nice is that it's formatted in a really great way. So if we go over to here to my View tab and click on Navigation Pane, you'll notice here I've got all of my individual heading ones. I click on this here, I go to Home, and then notice they're all heading ones. Now, I'm going to go ahead and keep this one, but before I do that, just notice that Copilot does give me the opportunity to go back to the previous draft if I want to, or go back to this one. And then I'm going to go ahead and click on Keep It. Now, as I scroll down, I can see this is a lot of really good information. It breaks it down for me. Something that would have taken me possibly a couple of days to do. Copilot did it in just a few seconds. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at an article that's already been written. So I'm going to go over here to this article about setting accessibility preferences in Acrobat Pro. Now, this is a very long article, about 1,500 words, and I don't got the time to summarize this, really understand what it is. So I'm going to have Copilot do all the work for me. So I'm going to come back over to here to Copilot, and you'll see this little side pane pops up and says, hey, ask me anything about this document, and also potentially summarize this document. So I'm going to click on Summarize This Doc. And you can see here it says working on a response for you. And you can see here it's now giving me a summary saying, here's a summary of the document, the main ideas. And it's summarizing this one paragraph, this paragraph, this paragraph. And then you can see it's gone from 1,500 words to maybe about 100 words. But what's so neat is that I can very easily click on any of these little footnotes, and it's going to take me to that part of the article that I can refer back to. Pretty great. One thing I want you to notice that in addition to saying, ask me anything about this document, I can also go a little bit deeper in case I'm curious about what kind of prompts are available because I may not know what Copilot even has available. So I'm going to click on this now and you're going to see here it has this prompts, understand what, well, tell me more about the, and you can see here it's going to go in some detail about this, summarize this doc in how many points, list the pros and cons. So it's essentially teaching you how to work with Copilot. All right, but I'm going to go over here to view more prompts. And now it's going to give me a whole bunch of different other ways to talk to it. Understand quickly. Explain this document in three sentences. We've already done summarize. 
Get the key information. Summarize this document into a high-level overview of the benefits of, and then of course you would put in your content there to fill it into the brackets. List the pros and cons of. Find specific information. Now if I like any of these and I say, listen, this is one I use all the time, I can go ahead and click on this little bookmark icon. It's gonna save the prompt. And then I can go over to here to save the prompt. And I can easily come back to it. So I'll go ahead and just try this one. I click on that. Tell me more about software used in accessibility. And then very simply click on send. And just like that, you can see here, according to the document, Acrobat provides several preferences to help make, making the reading of PDFs more accessible, etc. That's fantastic. Now, of course, I can copy that, put it into another document, send that out as an email, whatever I like. Beautiful. Now, let's go ahead and move on now to PowerPoint. Now, continuing on with my goal of talking about landscape architecture, I'd like to create a presentation on how to become a landscape architect. So let's go ahead and click on Copilot. And you're gonna see at the bottom, it says, ask me anything about this presentation, which we're gonna do in a little bit, but I'd like to create a presentation. Now I could click on that and it's gonna start me off with a prompt, but I have one all locked and loaded, ready to go. I'm gonna say, create a presentation on how to start a career as a landscape architect, and I'd like it to be 12 slides with an agenda and a conclusion. So notice that I am trying to be as specific as possible. Let's go ahead and click on send. And we have here, here you go, a 12 slide presentation on how to start a career as a landscape architect has been created. It'll also give me a nice little tip that if I'd like to, I can use the designer tab to make this a little bit more beautiful, a little bit more engaging. But let's go ahead and just see what it's done here. Let's go ahead and see on the left hand side, I've got about 11 slides, not too bad. And you'll see what it's done. It's giving me an agenda, just like I asked it to. And then it starts it off with what is landscape architecture, skills needed, et cetera, education and training. Now, for some of you, this might look like, well, that's a little bit underwhelming. But what's so neat about this is that they've given us notes as the presenter because presentation decks should not be so busy. We should be the star of our presentation. So if I go over to here to my notes in the far right-hand corner, it's giving me some good notes to pull from if I am in fact giving this presentation. So let's go to all of these. Notice, notes, notes, and notes. Now, as Copilot suggests, I do have the ability to go to the designer tab. So let's go ahead and click on that. And you're gonna see it is gonna give me some nice options in case I don't like the way this is laid out. So let's go ahead and try this one. And you can see I can very easily override that. I like that one. Let's go over to here. You're gonna see generating different slide ideas. I like that one, pretty cool. Now, if we scroll way down to the bottom, you can see here is more slide designs and then more and more and more. Let's try another one. Let's go over here to slide two and let's scroll down. You'll notice that it's even showing the words in a slightly different way. I like that. So instead of having bullets, you can see here I can put these nice little shapes around them. Let's now have PowerPoint and Copilot summarize a PowerPoint deck for me. I have this deck all about project management software. So this is very long, a lot very detailed, and I don't wanna have to read all this stuff here. So let's go back to Copilot. And you can see once again is ask questions about this deck as well as this little view prompts. We saw that earlier in Word. Let's go ahead and see what we can do with PowerPoint for that same regard. So I'm gonna go over here to view more prompts. Okay, so let's go ahead and check it out now. Now, in addition to my save prompts, I also have different categories. If I wanted to edit, create, or let's go ahead and click on understand and also ask. So now it's filtered them out. And I'll go ahead and just say summarize this presentation once again. And now I click on this and I'll say all software programs and their features. All right, and I'm gonna go ahead and do a follow-up on this because it gave me some very high-level information, which is good, I click on that, and I'll just say, tell me more about Asana. And it says here, according to this presentation, Asana is a popular task management tool that offers features like customizable boards, timelines, and calendars which is pretty fantastic. Again, a huge, huge time saver. And just like with Word, if I wanted to copy that, put that into an email or a separate document, I would be good to go. Now let's say I wanted to add on a new slide. So let's go back to my view prompts. And then you can see here is create. And then you can see here is add a slide. I choose that and I'm gonna say, add a slide about Monday project 
management software. And now what it's going to do is going to generate a whole new slide just all about that particular topic that I failed to mention inside of my original deck. So you can see there it is, monday.com. And look at that, it gives me these five new bullet points all about that. Really, really wonderful. And just like with my other slides, I should have a set of notes here. I can go ahead and make that a little bit taller. You can see everything there. And then just like anything else, I can move this around however I'd like. And finally, let's go back to our design tab and let's just see how we can override the entire slide deck. And you can see how even though it created it independently, it's still linking up to my master slides as well as all my design specifications built into my themes. And now let's go ahead and see how Copilot can help us with Excel. So we're working in this sport inventory document. And what I'm going to do is just bring up Copilot, same way as I did in PowerPoint and Word. And what I'd like to ask it to do is to highlight all of my Canada and Mexico within the region column. Now, I know I can do that with conditional formatting, but I'm going to ask Copilot to do that for me. Now, before I do anything at all, you'll notice that Copilot asked me to convert this data to a table. So very easily, I'm going to do that just by doing Control T on my keyboard and then click OK. And now it's a table. That is one of the requirements of Copilot within Excel. So let's go ahead now and ask it a question down below. And my question is, highlight all Canada and Mexico items in the region in blue. Okay, so now that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and send that off. And you can see it says done. I made the following changes and it gives me this nice little hex value code of what it does. And if I scroll down, I'm going to be able to find every instance of Canada and Mexico highlighted in blue. Now, if I change this to can and Mexico, notice how that remains in blue because it is in fact a conditional format that's been created automatically without me having to do anything at all. Pretty brilliant. Now let's go ahead and ask it to do a chart for us. Down in the bottom in my prompt, I'm going to say, I would like to have the total unit price by store name as a column chart. So you can see here I have all my store names, I have my unit prices, I would like to know them all as a chart to have them demonstrated more visually for me. So I'll go ahead and click on send. And you'll see this pops up now and it tells me exactly what it's got, but it's giving me the option to add it as a new sheet. That's exactly what I'm going to do. I click on that. And what happens is, is it actually has done a pivot table for me without me even asking it to do that. It's given me the chart, but the chart is in fact a pivot chart. So I can click on this now and you'll notice this is now a pivot table. And if I click on this, I can very easily filter it and I can sort it. I can do all kinds of different things to this as if this were just a pivot table all along that I created from scratch. Now, if you notice over here on the right hand side, I have my unit price and my quantity and I'd like to do a little bit of math on this to find out well, what is my total amount of sales combining these two. So I'm going to ask it another question. Create a new column of the product of the unit price and the quantity. Essentially, my product is going to be my multiplication and it's going to do a new column for me. So I'm going to click on send. And you're going to see it says generating a formula and it's going to make a new column based off of that formula and it's going to show me what in fact that formula is and it's going to give me the option to then insert the formula as well as explain the formula if I'd like. So I'm going to click on that and you can see just like that now I have a new column and just understand that it's done the entire column. It's essentially applied an array formula for the entire table. Now, just like how we saw with PowerPoint and Word, we also have other prompts we can access, create, understand, edit, and ask. You can click on view more prompts. And these prompts, of course, are going to have to do with Excel. So I encourage you to explore all these, see what's going to work for you, as well as save your prompts and take a look at some of the other subcategories. I'll close this out. And then finally, let's do a lesson on how Outlook and Copilot can work together. Copilot and Outlook offer two main services. You can see here within Copilot, I have the ability to draft with Copilot as well as coaching with Copilot. Let's go ahead and have Copilot help us draft an email from scratch. So I'm going to ask Copilot to draft an email responding to a prospective client, telling them that we've received their request for information. Now I'm going to detail to say to Copilot that the email should explain that the services we provide 
include 24-hour customer service, award-winning product support, and a one-year warranty. I'm also telling Copilot what the client's name is, and I'm also telling it what tone it should be and how long it should be. Now, before I click on Generate, let's go ahead and click on this little equalizer generation options. And you can see here, I can change the tone as well as the length, in addition to me asking for it here inside of my narrative. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on Generate. And there you have it. Dear Dr. Fisher, thank you for your interest. We appreciate your time and attention. We are happy to provide you with more information about our services, etc. And then it tells it that we have 24-hour customer service, award-winning product. Okay, that's fantastic. We'd love to hear more about your specific needs, etc. And then there we go. There's my name. Love that. Now, if I'm not sure about this one and I really want to get more options, I can then regenerate it. Of course, I can discard altogether, or I can say, you know what, this one's pretty great. And I could also make some other changes in case I decide I have other factors I want to add to it, or maybe even I want to change the tone. Let's go ahead and click on Regenerate. And now, a new email appears. Thank you for your interest. We're happy to provide you with more details. We offer a range of high-quality products, etc. So very similar, but maybe just slightly different wording. Maybe it's in more your voice. But what I want you to notice is that now I have two different drafts, just like how we saw within Word. I can go back to that original one, or I can go back to here, and I can even compare them. But I'm going to keep that second one just by simply clicking on Keep It. Now let's go ahead and take a look at Outlook and Copilot's second tool, which is the coaching tool. So I'm going to go back to my Home tab, click on New, and I'm going to put in an email that I've already written, and I want to get some feedback from Copilot on that. So you can see here I have, thanks a lot for your email. We're excited to work with you and think we can make you and your clients very happy. We have a reputation providing good customer service and pride ourselves on satisfying our customers for 25 years. Please respond when you can. Let's set up a meeting soon. Well, what I'd like to do is just see, well, you know what, how well is this written? What kind of tips can you give me? And just kind of basically trying to find a way to make this a little bit better. So I click on Copilot, and I'm going to go over here to Coaching by Copilot. And now you can see here it's analyzing my email for tone, clarity, etc., gathering some insights. And very soon we're going to see what Copilot is going to tell me about my writing. And you can see here I've got tone, reader sentiment, and clarity. Let's go ahead and click on tone. It says, could be more enthusiastic. The tone of the email is polite and professional, but it could also convey more excitement and interest in working with a potential client. Instead of thanks a lot, the email could say, thank you very much, or we greatly appreciate. I really like that. Sound confident and reliable. The email shows that the writer has a good reputation and experience in providing customer service. This can make the reader feel more comfortable and trusting in the writer's abilities. Suggestion, replace think with believe or are confident. Try adding more details. The email could invite further communication by asking the reader about their availability and preference for the meeting, which has to do with the clarity. Now, what I could do is now make some changes based off of their suggestions and then click on regenerate and see what the coach has to tell me about it. But I'm going to leave it at this for right now. Go back and rewrite it on my own. But we'll leave it there for you to practice on Outlook, PowerPoint, Excel, and Word to see how amazing Copilot can be for you and all of your projects and productivity. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To see the full course that this video came from, click over there. And click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.